Go. This sort of area and really this whole room is turning into their playroom. It used to be our school room. The last iteration was desks facing each other in a U shape. That did not work for me because I couldn't easily and comfortably sit next to them and do their schoolwork. So within a week, we were back at the dining room table. So I've decided to lean into that approach. In this season of life, the kids like to be together when we school. This room has become their space. They needed an area for toys. It was in our hallway. There were some in their bedrooms. There was some in the living room. And I have been slowly dropping in toys from around the house into here, things they got for Christmas and birthdays. This video is a collaboration with a hoarder's heart. Uh, Miss Hart over on YouTube is a friend of mine and she and I are coming together to share decluttering tips with you. Miss Hart is also creating a decluttering tips video to share. She and I are working together. We're very excited to share that this week as a team. Uh, please go ahead and check out her channel below. So my first tip is to have bins ready when you're doing a declutter. So a bin for keep, a bin for donate, a bin for trash, a bin for sell, whatever it is you think you're going to need. And sometimes those categories come up as you're going through a project. I would wait to buy storage containers until you've decided on what you're keeping. So you can see how large the keep pile is or how small the keep pile is to determine the storage that you need. I am reusing what I already have. This is small. It's not going to hold on some categories. I already know that, but I'm not going to deal with that until I've already decluttered and categorized all of the things I want to keep. Another tip I would have would be to find support in a friend, a family member, a parent, a child, a spouse, a group online, like a Facebook group. Find a supportive group that's going to help you through your project, your declutter project. And it might just need to be sharing before pictures to motivate yourself to share after pictures or asking people, hey, how would you organize this? Or how would you get rid of this? Um, because once you've decided to declutter, you still have to get rid of it. It's either gonna be trash or giveaway or sell or donate or whatever. Um, you still need to do that action and you might need a supportive group to help you get there. I don't know. <laughs> Here's some. Um, all right, so get the maze open. I did it! Thank you. I'll go put it over there. Maze open. I did it! I'll put it over there. I'll help you. Okay, we need a thing for cars. What's a good bin for cars? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a good bin for cars. Well, I have toys in the basement too to bring up that are on Can rotation. Bring up now? Can I bring them up now? Maybe. Take a look at your bins, okay? All your categories and your toys. Is there anything you are comfortable donating to other kids or do you want to keep everything that you have right now? The choices are yours because these are your toys. I am comfortable donating these. You are? Okay. I am comfortable with donating this. You are? I'm not comfortable without this. You're not comfortable with that? And your sister is not comfortable with this. She doesn't feel good today, but I know she loves those building blocks. Starter tip I would have would be to just start. Start with a drawer, start with a cabinet, start with a pile, start with a category. Just start even walking around your house and finding trash. Stuff that you just know is trash and belongs in the trash can. That's a way to start. Maybe you want to start with the hardest thing first so that when you do get down to the easiest thing, by then you have such momentum and rhythm that it's very quick and easy for you. Or maybe you want to start with the easy thing so that you can then build up momentum. What, we're missing states? I don't know how that happens. The what if holds us back when we're decluttering or trying to figure out how to live with less. We, want to, we know we want to live with less, but we cannot figure out how to do it. And that what if can hold you back. It holds me back still now. It is holding me back with books. 
and it's right now holding me back with these little shape toys. My four-year-old said, I don't want this anymore, but my seven-year-old said, yes, I'd like that. You know, I build honeycombs with this, I build houses with this. I use this when I'm creating cities with the blocks. He uses this as an extension for creating other things, so I don't want to get rid of it for him for now. And that what if can hold me back. Like, what if I did donate this? And he really loves it without checking with him first. And I'm glad I checked with the kids because I actually was thinking about getting rid of this. But my seven-year-old said, no, 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 I use that. So I've got Play Kitchen, a Paw Patrol matching puzzle, City Engineering Building, a Shapes puzzle, a Shapes tangram, tangrams thingy, uh, Survival Knots, which would be really great for my seven-year-old. Catastrophe they've been asking about recently, so I brought that out from the basement for them. Magnet tiles, that's like a standard. That's always out. Mazo, the Transformers my husband gave them. Play-Doh. Uh, builder thingies. Uh, cars. Duplos. This is a tent, a fort building kit, like a construction fort thing. I brought that up from the basement. I'm just gonna put some sheets with it so they can play with that again. The last time I played with that was in Pennsylvania <laughs> outside. Um, and they have train tracks. That's always out too. Uh, remote control cars. They do have more than I was thinking. Uh, puzzles. And upstairs they have little Legos and various other cars and toys and Barbies, dollhouse. My daughter has a ton of toys, but that's stuff she likes to keep in her room. And I'm just addressing the playroom today. So here's my challenge. This table, I got off a of Facebook marketplace for 20 bucks. And every time they use it, the blocks fall out of the bottom. So this is not the right storage and organization for building blocks. I, th I think if I have like six or eight things out, that'll, that'll be better. They play longer and more intentionally when there's less to choose from. And I, I rotate regularly. So I have no problem putting things in a bin for a month in the basement, especially now that the basement's so much more organized and there's not that much more to go through down there. Uh, I have one bin downstairs that is for toys and I did not bring up uh, their stomp rocket, a car organizer thing that they have, and then their magician set. So there's three categories downstairs as well that I didn't bring up because I know I'm not bringing them out this time. I'm going to put away, I'm going to put this away for now in storage. I'm going to put Mazo in storage. I'm going to put Transformers in storage because they've broken three of them already and my husband wasn't super happy. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put that, uh, I, I brought this up from the basement. They haven't played with this in a couple of months. The shapes puzzle I am gonna put out, but I'm gonna put this away for now, unless my seven year old asked me to go get it, and I will. Um, I only just got that out last week from Toy Rotation, so I'll leave that out because my five year old and my four year old play that together for like an hour when they do, and it's amazing and it's quiet. I'm a little nervous about the strings with little kids, that's probably not smart. I think what I'm gonna do, this will be a supervised activity with my seven-year-old. It is decidedly so. I'm also gonna put monster trucks in the basement for a little while. The reason I thought to do it this way is because their preschool that they attended when they were little, okay, my kids are little now, seven, five, and four, when they were really little, <laughs> Um, had blocks stored like this. And then the library that we used to go to also had blocks stored like this. That was just an invitation to play and you return them in an organized way. And I liked that. So that's what made me think of it to do it this way. So we'll try it.
check it. Hello. Hi, this is our giant secret. Oh, you know what you need? No, I need cool. to get out for a sec. Okay, you need the candles in here. The next floor. Yeah. We're the next floor. Oh. We're the next floor. the trash that I ended up with. Uh, a bath toy to for a fishing pole we don't have anymore. We don't have these magnet blocks anymore. Some old dried Play-Doh game pieces to a game we don't have anymore. A Q-tip from when we did painting for the American flag. And a popsicle wrapper. This was our trash. This tray is not trash, but I was just collecting trash to show you. I put Play-Doh under the cedar chest in the dining room for now because we play play-doh in the dining room i don't really like it when play-doh ends up in this room so that seemed to make sense for now i kept kitchen exactly as it is these posters are from when their desks were here if this becomes the long-term solution i should take those down but for now we have the periodic table of elements in Mommy. their play kitchen oh. all their duplos in here so they could take this basket and build wherever. I know, this is now the fort section. I know. <laughs> and their train tracks bin just lives here now, but I think actually I'll just slide it here so it's not like something you see when you walk in. But we'll see how that goes. For our social studies, right now we're talking about community and one of the project-based learning that my first grader is doing right now is building his own block and his own city from plans and coming up with <laughs> cost structures and budgeting. And so this is just sort of a complement to that. We have the city engineering kit, magnets that they can use to make buildings. And of course, these were from Melissa and Doug, I think. And train tracks and Jenga blocks. Sometimes we play Jenga, sometimes we build with them. Their city is gonna be congested with lots of cars. Over here we have the building blocks, catastrophe is just there. They could take the tray and play. I created an invitation to play this puzzle. I put the rest of the puzzles underneath here. And then the Paw Patrol matching puzzle that they like over here. And I have everything on a tray so they can take the tray into the family room and play if they wanted or play here or play in their fort now. <laughs> what are you doing in here? What are you doing in here? <laughs> 